Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marius, and I'm an amateur historical tailor. I know it's been a hot second since the last time I posted a video to YouTube. Um, first semester this year has been chaotic, and I'm very sorry. Um, I think the biggest difference since the last time I posted is my hair. I've started dyeing it, and I look so pale now. As I'm sure you can tell by the title of this video, I'm very excited today. And if you follow me on TikTok, you've probably heard me talking about the Faley Moor, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, or the Belted Plaid, or the Great Kilt, which, in my opinion, is one of the coolest historical garments ever to exist. I'm not going to go into too much detail today, because this is just meant to be a fun little vloggy thing, but, um, I love talking about kilts, so I might do a proper history video at some point. But what you need to know for this video is that the Faley Moor, or the Belted Plaid, is the predecessor to the modern kilt. It consists of one long length of unsewn fabric, which gets laid out in pleats and then belted around the waist to form something that looks a lot like a modern kilt on the bottom half. Now, I'm involved with some Jacobite reenactment stuff over here, and I really want a belted plaid. The problem is that proper tartan wool is expensive, and I'm a college student, but everything changed last Wednesday. Basically, someone in my reenactment regiment posted a link to a shop that sells the fabric for nine pounds a meter. Now that did seem a little sus to me because wool fabric is very expensive and tartan wools are even more expensive and I was scared that I was being catfished. But I could not pass up the opportunity to get a belted plaid for 36 pounds, so I just went for it. It's worth mentioning that these aren't proper clan tartans or anything like that. They're just kind of off-brand, which I guess might be part of the reason that they were so inexpensive, but clan tartans weren't really a thing yet in 1745, so we're in business. I ordered five meters of a red and green tartan that I thought would be good for a middle class impression and then just kind of crossed my fingers. And then I got the email that a parcel had arrived for me at reception and it was time for the moment of truth. Here's the parcel. So I unpacked it and it's really good man. The website said it was 100% wool and it feels like 100% wool. Um, it's meant to be 500 grams, and it is a solid weight for a kilt. And it's just really nice fabric. I love it. I'm gonna try to do a practice drape, and then see if it's too much fabric or not enough. As it turns out, five meters of fabric is more than I personally need because I am small, and much more than that is unwieldy. So I trimmed off the excess. I now have about four yards and ten inches of fabric in my kilt, and I can use the leftovers for a jacket or a waistcoat. So the only real sewing I'm doing for this is hemming the cut ends. I've heard of people pulling out a thread from the kilt itself to sew with, but I'm just gonna use linen thread. I'm gonna hem it like I'd hem pretty much anything 18th century, just fold the edges under and whip stitch. Here's the hem. So, moment of truth. Let's try her on. I live in a very small dorm and I don't have enough floor space to lay this all out, so um, I'm going to try to lay it out on my bed and I know I'm going to be playing five dimensional twister. I have seen tutorials on YouTube, but they seem to miss out some of the trickier details. There's meant to be a second belt in there and um, things just get a lot more complicated when you throw in a jacket and a waistcoat and a baldric and a sword and all that good stuff. I'm not going to be able to do it 100% properly because obviously I don't have a sword belt and a baldric and all that fun stuff that goes into the whole sequence of putting on a plaid, but I'm gonna do a little test run. So hopefully I'll be able to do a proper Highlander get ready with me at some point, but uh, for now I'm just gonna tie it the most basic way and see how it looks. I'm also gonna change into a slightly smaller hoodie because I think it'll be less bulky and look a bit nicer with the kilt. Uh, so I think it's worth mentioning, because I'm always wearing this climb hoodie on TikTok, that, uh, that I do have multiples in slightly different sizes. I'm not gross, I'm just very consistent with my modern fashion sense. So as you can see, I've got my plaid all laid out. This section here in the middle is pleated, kind of like the back of a modern kilt, which is fitting because it's going to be the back of our kilt. This section here and then this section that I'm sitting on now are both flat, uh, and we're going to use those as kind of the kilt aprons to overlap in the front. So I've managed to slide a belt under the plaid, and now I'm going to lie down on it and match up the bottom edge with my knees. I am going to do this part in my pajama pants because, um, this is a classy channel. But then again, you guys have all seen me in my shirt sleeves, which is a bit risque by period standards, so welcome to ye olde only fans. I apologize for the stupid angle. I don't have much space to work with. So now I wrap the first side, and I wrap the other side. Ugh. And I slide my belt to be about where my waist is. And 
I close my belt. This is not a proper period accurate belt, but I close my belt <laughs> to hold everything in place. Woo! Ah! It's alive! So now you've got this sort of funky arrangement going, which really looks like nothing at all. It just kind of looks like I've wrapped a large tartan bath towel around my waist. We're gonna take the corner of this front piece and we're gonna bring it around and secure it in the back by tucking it into the belt. Normally at this stage, you would already be wearing a second belt for your sword, but alas, there's one side folded back. So now we're gonna take the other side and do the exact same thing. Bring it around to the back. So now that you've got the top part of the kilt folded back, you can kind of see the kilt emerging. You can see all the pleats in the back uh, that do look a bit like a modern kilt. This kind of reminds me of a polonaise or a bustle. So one of the most common ways to style a kilt is to grab a corner from the left hand side, bring it up over your shoulder. You're gonna grab a corner from the right side, bring it around under your armpit and pin them here. Unfortunately, those round Viking looking brooches are a Victorian invention, I think. So you're gonna wanna use a straight pin to secure it. There we go. I've got everything up and out of my way and we've got a cute little sash thing going on. However, I am also a fan of a different documented way to wear this. I'm calling this one the Sentry Duty in Inverness. This sparks so much joy. I love this so much. I'm so happy with this kilt. I'm so glad I didn't get catfished. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope I'll have the next one up in less than three months. In the meantime, I've put my Instagram and my Ko-Fi in the description, so if you'd like to keep up with what I'm doing or help me make more videos, I would appreciate it a lot. I'd also like to take a moment to say thanks to everyone who's already donated to my Ko-Fi because honestly, your support really does mean the world. <laughs> and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to. Until next time, stay safe and see you soon.